This control system represents the roll control of an aircraft. We have the plant here and we have the controller here. The controller has again K. The objective in this example is to see how K influences the percent overshoot in the system. We notice that this is now a third order transfer function. When you find the Y over R, this will result in a third order transfer function as you see here. Unlike the past examples, this is now a third order transfer function. I have written here the transfer function y over r, and you see now that the highest coefficient in the polynomial here is 3. The tools that we developed to calculate overshoot and uh, settling time were derived from a second order differential equation. And the way you're going to approximate the second order transfer function from a third order is through the use of the concept of dominant poles. Now let's look at the location of poles for different control gains. I went ahead and replaced k with the respective values here and found the roots of this polynomial, which are the poles of the transfer function. When k equals to 0 0.7, we see the poles here, and they are all real numbers. This means that the time response to a step input will be an exponential function. This also means that the percent overshoot for this specific control gain is zero. There is no overshoot because you're dealing with an exponential waveform. When k equals to 3, we see now that we have one real pole and two complex poles. These complex poles now are the dominant poles because the real part is smaller than the other real pole here. They are relatively close. We can make an approximation and say, despite the fact that they are close, that the complex pole dominates the response. And I'll calculate the settling time or the overshoot based on the complex poles only. So let's do that. Let's just start by plotting the location of these poles in the S-plane. The real part of the pole is negative 1.04. So here you have the two poles. Negative 1.04, which is the distance to the origin on the real axis. And on the imaginary axis, we have plus 1.86j and negative 1.86j. Now, based on the location of the poles, we can determine the natural frequency. And as we saw in the lecture, the natural frequency is this distance, the distance from the pole to the origin of the imaginary plane. This distance here can be easily calculated. This is omega n, and omega n is the square root of 1.86 squared plus 1.04 squared. And this gives 2.13 radians per second. This is the natural frequency of the system when k equals to 3. Now we can find the damping ratio. And the damping ratio, as we know, is a function of this angle here between the imaginary axis and this line. Let's call this theta. Theta, using a simple trigonometric function, is the arc tangent of, of the real part divided by the imaginary part, 1.86. And this gives 29 degrees. Zeta is simply sine of theta, which is, in this case, sine of 29 degrees, 0 0.488. This is now the damping ratio. Now, from this simple trigonometric relation, we found omega n, and we found the damping ratio. We can now calculate the percent overshoot, and we can also calculate the settling time. Let's start with the percent overshoot. The percent overshoot is simply 100 times the exponential of negative pi times zeta divided by square root of 1 minus zeta squared. This is a simple function. We have zeta 0 0.44, 0 0.488. So this gives a percent overshoot of 17%. The settling time, we know that is 4 over zeta times omega n. We have zeta and omega n. Zeta is here. Omega n is there. The settling time is 3.8 seconds.
Now let's repeat the problem for k equals to 6. Again, we are considering only the complex conjugate poles. So let's plot them here. Imaginary and the real axis. The real part this time is 0 0.74. And the imaginary part is plus minus 2.81j. Omega n is again this distance here. And let's call this angle theta. Omega n now from trigonometry is the square root of 2.81 squared plus 0 0.74 squared. And this is equal to 2.9 radians per second. We can now calculate this angle first and then from the angle find zeta. That angle from trigonometry is the arc tangent of the real part divided by the imaginary part. That is 0 0.74 divided by 2.81. And that is 14 degrees. Now zeta can be calculated as sine of theta sine of 14, which is 0 0.25. With zeta and omega n, we can now determine the percent overshoot and settle in time. For the percent overshoot, same formula again. And this time, the percent overshoot is 43%. Notice the percent overshoot increased, the damping ratio decreased. The settling time is 4 over zeta omega n, and in this case, that is 3.4 seconds. Percent overshoot increased, but now the settling time decreased.